Today we're going to be looking at cucumber beetles and why a simple spray or removal every year is not enough to actually contain these and why if you don't take proper steps, the problem will just amplify over the years. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're talking about cucumber beetles. And if you don't watch this video to its entirety, I can guarantee you, you will have cucumber beetles every single year. And every single year, they will continue to get worse because the reality is that it's something that overwinters in the soil. Now, I may be slightly biased in this because I always look at things that start with the soil and do Due to that, I do a lot of preventative maintenance, microbe wise, uh, predatory wise, and I don't have a lot of pests, so I can't even show you images of what cucumber beetle looks like because I don't have any. So the images I do put up are going to just be Google uh, views, I guess you could say, of this because I just don't experience things of this nature. Fingers crossed one year I do because I can then make a video on it. I get so excited whenever something goes wrong in the garden because I'm like, oh yes, I can make a video about this finally. However, I want to thank you guys so much for buying merch. I forget to mention that I even have merch. I forget to wear the merch I do purchase. I wear it out in public, but then I forget to wear it for the videos. Thank you for all of you that have bought the aprons and the t-shirts and you name it. You just let me know in the comments down below if you like it. I personally really like the quality of what YouTube does in regards to merch. So any hoosers, if you know my format for pest management, fungal management, or bacterial management, you know I have a process. And the first process is to look at the life cycle of the pest we are dealing with. So when we look at cucumber beetles, there are some very specific attributes that we need to take into consideration. Cucumber beetles we know can damage crops that include cucumber, squash, beets, beans, peas, sweet potatoes, okra, corn, lettuce, onions, and basically everything in the cabbage family. And they are also a vector for disease, in particular blight when it comes to beans. So this can be runner beans, pole beans, bush beans, you name it, it affects them. If it's carrying the fungus or the bacterial issue. The truth is that the adult cucumber beetle actually overwinters cucurbit crops. So this could be either in the stems, the foliage, whatever the case is and also it can overwinter nearby in heavy mulched areas which is a very common practice now in the garden i personally use it it's great for suppressing weeds it's great for suppressing other forms of pests however with that can come issues especially if we are leaving the mulch in place and not letting the cold do its job for us or we're composting that now damaged mulch so first off i will say there is a rule and that rule is the 30 percent rule also known as the nature tax so if less than 30 percent of the plant is damaged through fungi bacteria fertilizer issues or pests we can sit back, relax, and understand that we're just paying nature's tax. And that's, we're using her, her ecosystem, her zone, her home, to grow our food that then feeds us. So because of the nature tax, we can just chill out and not worry too, too much. However, if you're noticing damage it is way over 30%, meaning over 30% of the leaves have holes in them, or just 30% of the greenery looks as though it's damaged, it's time that we step in and do something. So if we see the adults or we see damage caused by adult beetles, we can then take the process or the necessary steps needed in order to help control the adults. So one of the most effective is physical removal. Yes, that means putting those gloves on and physically removing the adults. This will prevent them from breeding, laying eggs, and causing more destruction. After the adults are removed, we can use things like row cover to hopefully keep them out of that patch of soil in particular. And you would want to row cover any crops in the garden that can be affected by cucumber beetles, not just the ones that they're chewing on. The third option for those of you that are not interested in physically picking these beetles up is to actually use predators such as lacewings, ladybugs or assassin bugs as we like to call them these 
pest management systems will eat the adults and some of the younger beetle forms, but will not go after eggs and larvae that are in the actual soil. If the adults are surfacing and actually physically eating, there is a clay out there that we can use, very similar to diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth actually in this situation would work as well, but a lot of people do specifically suggest using kaolian clay and this is a video request i've also gotten it's on the list i promise i'm going to get to it but kaolian clay in particular is known to orientate the the insect somehow some way it must have some sort of uh, light reflective properties that ultimately affect where the beetle decides to go and then for those of you out there that are not scared of pesticides and if you're new to this channel just fyi i'm not against conventional or organic i just will go for whatever works you can not like me for that statement but regardless that's just who i am i'm out there for all the opportunities there are two forms of pesticides you can use and i will insert what the names are here but these will work regardless so if you're in an emergency situation over 30 percent is damaged you're relying on this to feed your family go wild spray that shiznat on follow the instructions for when it can be eaten again or how to eat after that product is applied i personally don't use pesticides in my garden very often but if i was an emergency situation i'd be down for it now i did say that it overwinters not only in the physical plant itself so the dead foliage but the mulch and potentially the soil meaning every year that we do not use preventative maintenance or some form of management system, the issue can amplify and get worse. So there are some steps you want to choose to use if you know you have cucumber beetles, maybe your neighbor's talking about how they have cucumber beetles and you wanna prevent against this taking over your garden in the next year. There's lots of methods we can use. So the first one is nematodes. I talk these bad boys up like crazy. Now the brand I use, Nema Nights, I don't think that they have any uh, cucumber beetle specific nematodes. However, there is a brand out there called Nema Seek that does take care of cucumber beetles. And what they do is basically roll through the soil, picking up eggs, pupae, you name it. You can apply these in the middle of an infestation to help take those guys out. The only time I wouldn't is if the intention is to eventually use the insecticide, the actual chemical insecticide. Reason being is because it's obviously going to damage just microbes in general or bugs in general. And so it will obviously take out your hard earned money when it comes to the nematodes. There is also spinosad sprays. So S-P-I-N-O-S-A-D sprays that can be applied to the soil or to the foliage or to the mulch to actually remove any cucumber beetles in that area. But again, it's gonna take out kind of everything. So use that with caution. And of course, most importantly, is reduce the areas that the actual cucumber beetle can overwinter in. So if we have the issue, we wanna remove that foliage, toss it in the garbage, do not compost it, do not give it to your community compost, you know, try to preserve the, the soil as much as you possibly can. And of course, crop rotation is key. So I know this is contrary to what maybe Eileen Ingham or um, some other folks out there say, where you just continuous crop the same crop in hopes of making the rhizosphere better engineered towards beneficial microbes specific to that plant. And in you know a really high intensity case where someone's really on top of their microbes and they are ensuring that the, the necessary nematodes are present, um, necessary you know fighters, I guess you could say, ladybugs, lace wings, that sort of thing are present. Sure, yeah, fine. You can continue this crop in that area so long as you're ensuring the entire ecosystem as a whole is preserved. However, for us average folk that don't have you know scientific microscopes in our basement, just crop rotate. It's very, very simple method to ensure that you don't have issues such as flea beetles, cucumber beetles, potato bugs, 
happening in the same area. And this doesn't have to be extreme. This can literally be potatoes on one side of the garden, potatoes on the opposite side of the garden the next year. It's literally that simple. With that being said, you have to let me know in the comments down below if you're suffering from cucumber beetles this year. I'd be interested to know along with other pests that you are currently encountering. Please let me know in the comments because I can make a video for you specifically in regards to your problem. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and of course, go sign up for the newsletter. I do not spam whatsoever. It's just in case I fall off the end of the earth or something like that, I can actually email you guys and be like, hey, this is where I am now. Plus, you can ask people on the newsletter. I sent out one newsletter in the last 14 months. So. <laughs> I don't spam, I promise. At most, I will give you discount codes. I'm thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.